Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight with sad news to pass along. Former Connecticut Governor Jody Rell died today. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Governor Rell was a historic state leader and respected political giant. Her family tells us she died after battling a brief illness at a hospital in Florida. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst joins us in studio. And uh, Emma, we know you spoke with uh, dozens of people today. How are they remembering Jody Rell? Well, well, Brent, Sarah, it's really hard to find someone today who doesn't have something to say about the former governor. She sure served in the State House of Representatives for decades. Starting in 1985, then she was lieutenant governor on John Rowland's Republican ticket. But she had to take over to pull the state out of massive scandal after Rowland was federally investigated, eventually serving prison time. Rowell was only the second woman governor here in Connecticut, leading the state from 2004 to 2011. She described her job over those years as restoring honor to Connecticut and public faith in government. Those I spoke with today say there was no one better for that task at the time and believe the country right now could use more politicians like Jody Rell. Our state lost a trailblazing female leader. I love what she stood for, but I love her as a human being as a person. She did not run around as a Republican. I didn't run around as a Democrat. We ran around as friends. She was a classic moderate Connecticut politician, and that, I think that goes true for that the silent majority, the people in the middle. She was very good at that. She was a person who put people over politics. She really tried to work across the aisle for the best interests of uh, the people of Connecticut, and I think that reflects the fact she's a good person. She was always thoughtful. She was always careful what she said, and she was, um, she brought out the best in people. She wasn't a partisan. The state came ahead of party politics, which is something uh, kind of unique in today's age. But that's what she did, and that's what all politicians should do. Governor Rell had sort of that maternal style of governing, and I think it's why the state of Connecticut embraced her so much and she just had such a, pri a high approval ratings in the state of Connecticut. She talked about how she sort of felt that she was the mother of the Senate and held people in line. She had a certain grace about her when she did her job. In a day of bombastic politicians and whoever the loudest in the room is tends to win, she was the exact opposite. She was civil, she was calm, and I think she really was a steady hand for Connecticut at an important time. And Rell was Connecticut's last GOP governor, too. She did spend the rest of her life promoting work across the aisle and inspiring political involvement, especially through Hartford's Jody Rell Center for Public Service. And coming up here at 6.30, I'll be back with a little bit more, not just on who she was as a person, but on her lasting political legacy and some of the policies that she championed. Mm -hmm. All right. right. Thank you, Emma. And you. friends and former colleagues are from both sides of the aisle are still remembering Governor Rell tonight. As those messages come in to us, we'll keep sharing them with you on fox61.com. All right. In federal politics tonight, a change in plans for President-elect Donald Trump's cabinet tonight. Matt Gates has withdrawn his name from consideration for attorney general while he faces scrutiny over a federal sex trafficking investigation. Gates posted on X today in part, quote, while the momentum was strong, it is clear that my confirmation was unfairly becoming a distraction to the critical work of the Trump and Vance transition. And Trump responded on True Social with a post that reads, quote, I greatly appreciate the recent efforts of Matt Gates in seeking approval to be attorney general. He was doing very well, but at the same time did not want to be a distraction for the administration. Finally, some rain today. It was actually so nice. Yeah. Will it last, though, into the weekend? Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. Rach, how about it? I do actually think we'll see a few lingering showers off and on right into Saturday morning. But overall, the heaviest rain is by far today. And what we will see tonight as some downpours fill back in again and redevelop as the storm moves right over Connecticut. And in addition to rain, which we absolutely need, we could get a bit of wet snow in parts of western Connecticut too, especially after 11 o'clock or midnight and into tomorrow morning. That could result in some slippery spots. Again, this is going to be for western Connecticut. We're talking about the higher elevations, especially of Fairfield and also Litchfield counties, where there could be some scattered coatings and maybe even up to an inch. Right now we have showers 
showers across the state and some locally heavier downpours too. But again, I think this system, you can actually see some of those heavier downpours just south of New York City that will kind of pivot in again as we head through the overnight. So we are in a weather impact alert for that potential for that changeover in western areas. Well, that doesn't include everybody. Do you want to check in with the Fox 61 morning show crew the farther west you live? Here's a look at some of those heavier downpours by 10 or 11 o'clock at night. There's that changeover. This is after 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and by daybreak tomorrow, it's a different story depending on where you live across the state. We'll talk more about it. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. We have an update tonight. Hartford police have located a double homicide suspect's vehicle. However, the suspect is still on the loose. Police are still searching for Lance Morales. He is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, do not approach him. Simply call 911. Morales is accused of shooting and killing 20-year-old Josiah Mercado and her infant son, Messiah Diaz, on New Britain Avenue Tuesday. A man in his 20s was also injured. Well, new tonight, a corrections officer is facing charges for allegedly assaulting an inmate in Montville. Todd Blevins was arrested yesterday. There was an incident last November at Corrigan Correctional Center, and according to the arrest warrant, surveillance video shows Blevins throwing an inmate on the ground and then jumping on him and holding him down. The inmate had several injuries and had to get stitches. Blevins is due in court next month. And new at six, a man faces charges in a robbery and assault at a Branford spa. Police say Terrell Maynard demanded money from the healthy spa back in September. He's accused of physically and sexually assaulting one person at the spa during the same incident and a separate incident in August. Maynard has been in police custody since October 7th for a similar crime in Milford. Crews are looking into the cause of a house fire in New Haven. This fire broke out at the home on Pierpont Street just before six this morning. Firefighters say when they arrived on scene, the back of the house was engulfed. We don't know if anyone was home at the time. Well, a Fox follow up tonight on a story we first brought you last month. There are more changes coming from Anthem Insurance after our team uncovered and investigated rate cuts on therapies for people with special needs. Tonight we're learning some new decisions could mean major changes for people heading into surgery. Fox 61's Matt Karen explains. On November 14th, the American Society of Anesthesiologists put out this letter sounding the alarm that Anthem suddenly decided to cap their coverage of anesthesia at an arbitrary time limit, a decision that doctors say isn't based on good medicine. There shouldn't be an arbitrary cutoff. Doctors across Connecticut and the country agree. They're prioritizing the profits over the medical care. Anthem's recent edict that they'll only pay for anesthesia up to a time limit is not only dangerous, but heartless. We have the patient's interest in mind. Uh, it would be nice if Anthem had the same perspective. And while doctors may not be waking patients up to ask them if they'd like to continue anesthesia, that means when they do wake up, they may be whacked with an out-of-pocket expense. There are circumstances where they won't pay for any of the anesthesia, even up to the point where they say, it's justified. It's just absurd. We met anesthesiologist Dr. Ken Stone at St. Mary's Hospital in Waterbury. He's the calming last face a patient sees before falling asleep. He points out that the stress and nerves surrounding surgery shouldn't be compounded by a crippling financial uncertainty. When a patient needs surgery, it's a scary time for them. There is no minor surgery from the perspective of a patient. Doctors cite plenty of real-world examples of surgeries taking longer than expected. Blood loss, difficult anatomy, a complication, or comorbidity. Medicine isn't one-size-fits-all. In the moment, you know, do no, do no harm. We all took the Hippocratic Oath. The American Society of Anesthesiologists has called on Anthem to immediately reverse the rule. Pretend like you have the CEO of Anthem in front of you right now. What do you say to that person? Uh, I start off with, what were you thinking and how dare you? Fox 61 asked Anthem to make an executive available for an interview. They didn't, but they did send us a statement that said in part, we identified additional ways to safeguard against potential anesthesia provider overbilling and went on to say they are using the Center for Medicaid Services physician work time values to determine the appropriate number of minutes, continuing that providers who go beyond the time limit can submit documentation for further review as part of a claim dispute. When we investigated Anthem in October, our report shined a light on the impact rate cuts had on special needs therapies. That's when state lawmakers started paying attention. 
My concern is, is that some patients may decide to delay or not do some of these uh, types of surgeries and procedures of concern about what those bills might be. Not only is State Senator Jeff Gordon a lawmaker, he's also a physician. And now he's vowing to craft bipartisan legislation to put guardrails of accountability on Anthem. If these insurances have the light shined on them, so it's a more transparent process, you'll certainly hear from the medical community advocating for patient care, but you're also going to hear from the public who would be concerned about this. Uh, and that is a legitimate role of the state, I believe, for oversight. Anthem claims the policy change is an effort to make health care simpler and more affordable. They claim it will not apply to anesthesia providers in Connecticut for now, nor would it apply to maternal or pediatric care. Reporting in Wallingford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.